Okay, ciao everyone. Chef Paradiso here. We're going to be talking about chapter six in our baking book. Okay, so chapter six talks about the 12 steps of the uh, bread baking process, the yeast production. And so we have our scale ingredients, um, mixing. So I scale the ingredients. We're going to mix our dough. Uh, we're going to do bulk fermentation, which means we're going to put it in the proofer. We'll cover it, put it in the proofer, let it double in size. This is a, a regular dough, so it doesn't have to go three-fourths of the way. A rich dough goes three-fourths of the way. This is just regular dough, so it's going to be, uh, uh, we'll double in size. Uh, we'll take it out, we, we fold it or punching. We punch it, we'll divide it. Uh, we'll divide our dough into three because we're going to do a, a braided bread. Um, we will uh, round it on the table, which means we will round it and, and shape it uh, evenly. We'll bench it, let it rest on the table, and that's called benching, so we'll let it rest, and then we'll punch it and we'll um, shape it and pan it up on a sheet pan. We're gonna do a nice braid. Um, we'll proof it, the second proof. We'll make that and make sure it doubles again in size. So when we look at it, the second proof, we're going to shake it a little and it should look like jello just a little jiggly which is nice and light we overproof the dough it'll expand the yeast so far that it'll uh, collapse and so your dough will fall okay uh, once we take it out of the proofer we're going to egg wash it put some seeds on it brush it very lightly so that way it doesn't collapse um, brush it lightly bake it off at uh, 400 degrees and then take it out and uh, you can see, you're, after you're, you bake it, you have it cooling it off, and then you store it. Or number 13, which is my favorite, manja, eating it. Oh, I love warm bread out of the oven. So, okay, so those are our 12 steps. So we're gonna mix our bread. I'm gonna grab our water. Okay, here's our water. We're gonna take our temperature of our water. Remember, water, the best temperature for water is 70 to 90 degrees. And our water here is actually about 83. So that's perfect, okay? So, we have our bowl here. Now the bowl is a little bit cool, so that means it's gonna drop our temperature of our water, of course. So we're gonna add our water to our bowl. And since that's going to drop the temperature a little bit, it's still going to be in a good range uh, for, uh, for our yeast. Let's sprinkle our yeast on top. We'll let that dissolve a little bit. Okay. We're going to remember now, milk powder. We're going to add our milk powder so it dissolves with our, our yeast. And just a pinch, just a pinch. of sugar, because that's going to feed the yeast. So I'm just stir this a little. Scrape down the sides. And it's okay for the, the, the milk powder to be a little bit lumpy like that. It's not going to hurt anything. It's just going to start to dissolve once we have our, all of our, we start adding our flour and such, it'll just mix right in, okay? Now if you wanted to, you can get a whisk and, and really uh, mix it all in, but like I said, it will, it will all just dissolve very nicely. Okay, so we have the yeast, the water, our milk powder. So now we're gonna add just, we're gonna add half of our flour. Okay, and the reason being is that sometimes, depending on the weather, and it has been so warm here, so dry, that that flour does not have any moisture in it at all. No moisture whatsoever. So it's very, very dry. So that means that it, it might not take all of that flour. 
mixing our dough. So now you can see the little lumps here. That's right, I'm gonna, so I'm gonna add a little bit more flour. Now at this point, okay, remember, you added, if I would've added all of this sugar to your yeast, what would happen is that it would actually uh, kill the yeast because it's too much sugar. It have too much for uh, the yeast, to, too much uh, food for the yeast to eat and it would actually choke it. So you have to be careful. So now that it's mixed in, uh, the flour's mixed in with it, we're okay to add, to add it to our, our yeast mixture. Okay, so you can see it's still nice and wet. And that's good. So at this point, scrape in the side. Make sure you scrape the sides. You don't want any chunks anywhere. And I have a bowl scraper there. I'm gonna switch in a minute. So here's our dough. Make sure you can see that, right? Okay, so a little bit more flour, right? So now we can throw in our salt. Remember, salt is so important to our, our ingredients because now it's gonna inhibit the yeast growth. Okay, and it's gonna strengthen the gluten. So now that we're mixing it in while it's still wet, it'll dissolve and it will uh, it'll, uh, it'll work really well with the yeast. Okay, so we have that at that point here. So now I'm going to get my bowl scraper. Okay, and I'm gonna throw in our flat. butter out of here. So my butter is room temperature, which is really nice. Okay. And we also have our shortening. Like I said, you can do all butter. That's fine too. If you're doing this at home or whatever, it tastes a little bit better. But, you know, recipe in your book. This recipe is actually in your book, the uh, soft roll dough. So, uh, I'm gonna add a little bit more flour. So you can look up this recipe. This is just one uh, version a smaller version because everybody's going to make one loaf of bread for themselves just so you can you can learn how to how to mix it and stuff okay mix it by hand so i'm scraping the sides of the bowl cleaning it up pushing it into the flour into the dough itself so get that gluten working it's nice and elastic still a little tacky right so Look at I still have quite a bit of flour left, right? So I don't want to add too much more. But I'm gonna I'll change this to the table in a minute to keep working it. So if I would add all that, we'd have a very tough dough, or, or I should say very dry dough. So you have to be careful with that, that you don't want it to go overdo it. So now I'm able to pull, you can see, I can just pull this right out of the the bowl now, which is really nice. Put this to the side right here. Okay. I'm gonna take my get rid of my paper right here. Put a little bit. So it feels a little soft. But now I'm gonna work it on the table. So push and fold. Push and push with the palm of your hand, fold over, push with the palm of your hand, fold over. And you can feel it. See, you can see it absorbing flour which is really nice but again you don't want to add all your flour because what will happen is that it'll it'll just be too dry your bread will be too dry and if your bread's too dry when you do your braids it won't they won't come together they won't stick together they'll bake but they'll fall apart when you're uh, when you bake it after you bake it you go to cut it so if you ever had a, a, a slice of bread or a loaf of bread and you cut it and pretty soon it's falling apart it's because your bread was just a little too dry so again, you're gonna be able to get the fill of the dough. When you're mixing this, you'll get the fill of the dough. Okay. So you wanna make sure you absorb. It's nice, this is nice. It's turning out really, really nice. And yours will be exactly the same. So you want it to be tacky, not sticky, but just tacky. So that's what you're. That's what we're. Gonna, that's what we're looking for. So we've done two steps so far in our twelve steps. The only two steps we've done is scaled our ingredients 
and this is mixing right okay so sometimes people say can you over mix your dough and so for um, English muffins for example you want to over mix your dough and that's what makes it uh, that texture is a it's kind of a chewy texture so if you over mix your dough that's what your product will be so and usually you mix seven to ten minutes now we're doing this by hand there's other recipes you can use the mixer which is fine and I'm going to show you the uh, whole wheat recipe that we're going to be making I'm going to be making the whole wheat in a big bulk, a big uh, bulk batch for you so that way you don't have to because our time is a little limited here it takes quite a while to proof our breads and stuff you know and such just going through the 12 steps so but we'll uh, this looks like it's getting pretty good feels really nice doesn't feel it's not sticking to my gloves at all okay see it's just a tad bit tacky but not sticky and so let me see if you can see that All right, so I'm going to get my bowl here, clean bowl. I'm going to spray my pan, spray my dough, and I'm going to make sure I'm going to get this pan. Piece of saran wrap here. Okay. So we're going to put. I like to wrap my dough the first round with saran wrap. And the reason we do this is just so you can put your name on the corner here. And it's going to go into the proofer until it doubles in size. Oh, the other thing we can do too is, so it's that small. So double in size, I'm going to put a ring, mark the ring around on the inside of the bowl on this ran wrap. You can see, so once it doubles in size, it should be as big as the, that ring that you put on there. Okay, so I will put this in the proofer for us. And then once it's done, I will do our next step, which would be punching, dividing, rounding, benching. Uh, those, those next steps that we need to do. So I will see you in just a few. Okay, all right, everyone. Here's our bread, I just pulled it out of the proofer. So it's doubled in size. And hopefully you can see, I want you to be able to see, it's close enough. See where it went up to that line. Remember we did a line around the edge. And so now we have our dough, it's doubled in size, which is really nice. So now, bulk fermentation. So now we're punching. A nice, smells good. You do your punching, we're gonna take it out of the bowl here, the bowl under the table. Okay, and so sometimes I like to what I like to do is oil the table a little, which is really nice so that way it doesn't stick. There we go. So now we're going to measure our dough. See how much we have here. We're gonna zero out our scale. So we have 19.35. So 19.45, 19.45 divided by three, three into 19 and six times three is 18. Uh, so it's gonna be three, uh, six ounces, six and a half ounces maybe each round. So let's try that and see. So I have our dough. No too much. So now we're cutting or dividing our dough. So, okay, let's go back. Folding and punching, okay? Redistributes the yeast, uh, strengthens the gluten a little, um, and uh, gives air into the, the product, and so we read that up and make sure we have that. Dividing, we're portioning, and so I have 6.5. So let's see if we do another. 6.40. 6 
five. So this one should be yep, six point five. There we go. Okay, so now that we have them divided, now we're gonna round. So this is what you're, you're gonna get your dough and you're gonna flatten it and pull everything underneath the bottom. And then on your table, where you have it nice and you have it oiled here, you're gonna grab it, you're gonna cup it. Okay, and as you go around, you're going to leave your thumbs together and you're pinching the dough between your pinkies and the table. And what happens is that you get a really nice smooth top. Okay, and we're gonna set that aside. So let's do this one. So again, you can see this is what it looks like, right? Okay, so now we're going to shape it, move everything to the bottom. Okay, so now we're going to round it. Again, keep your thumbs together, but your cut your hands open, your I'm pinching between the, the dough between my pinkies and the table, and I go around, it's pulling the dough. Okay, and we're gonna do it one more time. Again, you can see the dough the way it is. We're gonna do the start rounding. Again, leave your hands open. And as you're pinching, it's gonna pull the dough underneath to make it nice and so it's tightening it and it's going underneath. So, okay. So now we have to let this rest, oh, I wanna say at least five minutes, okay? So I'm just going to use the same paper I had. Just make sure the the marker is on the top part, so you know those are yours. So we're going to let this rest for five minutes, and then we'll come back and we'll do our shape, and uh, we'll put it back in the proofer. Okay, everyone. So the dough has rested on the table. We benched it. Uh, it's been over five minutes or so, so you can see how nice how nice and light. The dough is really good shape. All right, put this aside for right now. Okay, so now we're going to do our makeup and panning, right? Okay, I'm going to oil the table just a tad. Okay, so I'm going to take one of these and I'm going to punch it. I'm expelling all the air, get all the air bubbles out. Okay, I'm going to flip it, stretch it, fold it into the center. So they touch, and I'm gonna use my fingers, and I'm gonna press all those air bubbles out of here. Because if you ever bought a loaf of bread that has a big air, air pocket in the center and it's hollow, it's because they didn't expel all the air bubbles. So then we're gonna to pull towards you. We're gonna pinch, 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 pinch. Now, you wanna make sure it's even, and then you're going to get palm in your hand, okay? And I want to make sure that you, you're going to seal it, the palm in your hand. Okay, so now we're going to roll. So I use my fingers to press the dough where I want it to go and the palms of my hand. And so we're going to do a little bit different. We're going to break this, but we're going to do an S shape. So I want the ends of it to be a little thinner than the center. I want the center to stay thick. to give you a different shape, okay? All right, touch more oil. I have my little container of oil here. So, I want to make sure, that way it doesn't stick to the table. You don't want, your, you don't want to tear your dough. You just want to make sure it's thin, okay? And always the seal, wherever you see that seal, you want that on the bottom. Let's do the next one. Stop that dough. Okay. Towards you again. Seal the edge. Roll again with your fingers and palm your hand. Just want to make sure the edges are really nice. Thicker in the center. You feel there's an air bubble in the center? Just Pop that. Just give it a pinch, it'll come right off. 
Okay, again, maybe a touch of oil. So you all you want them all to be the same length, of course. So that looks pretty good. There's this right there, make sure. So here's our last one. Expel all the air. Slap it around. Just get all those air bubbles out. Go to the center. Press it, make sure there's no air pockets anywhere. And then towards you, just keep pulling and pinching towards you. Very tightly, so that way it's there. So palm your hand, seal it, again, roll it. So you don't need too much oil on the table either. So if you get too much oil, your dough will just be sliding everywhere. So remember, dough. Uh, fat is a tenderizer, so it's not going to hurt the dough. Okay, that looks pretty good. I think I did okay, huh? Hope so. All right, let's find that. Here's that seam again. Seams to the bottom. Okay, so now we're going to braid, right? Okay, so we're going to braid that part's to the center. Okay, everybody can see that? Very good. Okay, so now you're gonna go, just like braiding hair. Go outside, to the inside, to the inside. Okay, and so now you're gonna flip it over. And you can see your seams and that's fine. You want to do the same thing, outside to the inside, and you can pull the dough just a little on the ends when you get towards the end, just to make sure. And you're going to pinch it really well so it doesn't come apart on you. Okay, so now we're going to flip it over so we have our nice shape. Okay, we have our sheet pan here. Now. I did I, I, I did a little bit smaller of the parchment paper instead of the full sheet pan because I don't want the paper to fly up and hit the sides of the bread. So we're going to put this in the center. So now I'm going to get, I'm going to twist, let me do it this way so you can see. I'm going to actually tuck the ends underneath the dough so it gives it a nice look. And then this one's going to go the opposite way tuck it underneath so you have a nice nice braided bread so I'm gonna make sure you see that oops better hold that huh there we go you can see that I'm gonna make sure my name is in the corner so nobody takes my bread and it's gonna go back into the proofer so we just did number eight makeup and panning so now it's going to get its regular proof, double in size, and then we will uh, uh, egg wash very lightly, some seeds, and put it in the oven. Okay, I will see you in, I will put this in the uh, uh, proofer, and then we will do our other breads. Okay, here's our braided bread, look how nice it is. We have my name in the center there, on uh, the corner. So I wanted to show you, I want to make sure you can see. See how it's jiggly? Hopefully you can see that. Uh, it jiggles like jello. You can feel it feels very nice and light. So this is the point we're gonna put on our egg wash. But we wanna make sure we're gonna brush this on really nice and light. If you press too hard, this is where you'll lose your, your uh, proofing. You'll, all your air will come out. You wanna be very careful. And you wanna get it around the bottom too. So if you don't, then when it does bake, because so this is going to rise in the oven, and so if you don't have it all done on the sides, you'll have uneven uh, coloring. So your egg wash, this is just uh, a whole egg, and it has a little bit of water added to it. And so we're just brushing on very lightly. Don't have to 
do a very excessive, just very lightly. Let me see if you can see. So, if I do the edge here, I want to show you what happens if you press too hard. See what happens? See how flat it got? So you just want to be careful, you don't push so hard. So, like I said, just around the edges, very nice and light. I just wanted to show you that. So, and it'll bake a little bit different that way too. Okay, so you want to fall. So, I got sesame seeds. We're gonna put some sesame seeds on here. So make sure you get them all the way across. And then go back. Adds nice color, another texture. They'll get nice and golden on top. They look really good, taste really good. Stiff, nice and light, so it's very good. All right, so we got our sesame seeds on, we got our bread ready, ovens are ready to go. So I will meet you over by the oven and we will get this in the oven and uh, bake it for at 400 degrees. So that way we get a nice golden color. We're gonna start at probably about 12 minutes. All right, we'll see you in just a moment. So, okay, everyone, here we are. We have our braided bread. Our soft roll dough, or it's braided, look how nice. Okay, proof really nice. Now again, if we would have overproofed this, then they would collapse and we lose all that bone that we have. You can see how it shakes nice. Let's see if you can see that. That jello. There you go. Okay, so we underproofed it, then the side would tear that means that we would, it would, uh, we're trying to push the yeast to go as far as it could, and then it would tear on the side. So that's when you know it's underproof. So as long as it's nice and light, and it is nice and light, then we're gonna put it in our oven now. We put our oven door. On our rack. So I'm gonna set this for 12 minutes and then we'll check them and see how they are should have a nice golden color uh, when it comes out and then we'll uh, have a beautiful loaf of bread to enjoy okay I'll see you back in a few minutes okay let's turn off this timer because nothing is loud all right so we're going to check our bread here let's open our door and we'll take a look and here's our loaf of bread that we made. And there you go. I'll make sure you can see this. I'm looking in the camera there. Look how nice, see we have nice golden color. Okay, in the creases here, it's golden there. Looks really nice, the sides, we proofed it long enough. It has a nice sheen to it. Sesame seeds look really good. So there we completed. So we did our 12 steps, right? So let me put this on the rack and let it cool. So that's, uh, that's step, what, 11? And then 12, we would wrap it. Once it's cold, we'd wrap it and freeze it. That's the best way to keep the products uh, from getting stale. Um, products getting stale would be when they're, um, uh, when the air gets them. So as soon as it comes out of the oven, it starts to get stale. When it starts to cool off, it's losing its moisture. Okay, so that's why uh, we'll let it cool, and that's why everybody likes to eat warm bread, and I love warm bread, it's delicious. So anyway, today we did our 12 steps. So there was, we scaled our ingredients, we mixed them, we did a bulk fermentation, we did a punching or folding, we did our dividing, we rounded, we let it rest on uh, the table, which is benching. Um, we made a makeup and panning and did our braiding. We scaled it out and uh, makeup and panning, and then we uh, did our uh, second proofing. Once that was done, it came out, came into the oven. We egg washed it, put seeds on it, uh, we baked it. It's now it's cooling, and we'll have it ready to go. So thank you, everyone. I want to make sure. There we go. Okay, 
I will see you next class and remember to do your homework. Arrivederci everyone. Bye bye.